Right. <laughs> um, well, this is awkward because this is the first time that Giles isn't on the podcast, but it doesn't matter because we've replaced Giles with uh, a Swedish version, which is, uh, do you want to just go and tell them your name real quick? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This uh, is, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm Joel. <laughs> Joel Larson on the Motus podcast. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. So, basically, we've had a bit of a um, eventful week. Has it yeah. been a week? Pretty much, yeah. I don't know how long th- this... Anyway, basically, yeah, we just got cool. back from... Yeah, we got bloggy behind the camera. Um, we came back from Project Underground, and um, some people were ill. Mm. And I've happened to test positive for COVID. So that means Giles can't come in, but we've trapped Joel. <laughs> Which might sound a bit dumb, but we just thought that because I've already been with you guys for like the entire time. Yeah. If I'm getting it, I'm probably already getting it. You know what I mean? Like Exactly. Mm. Yeah. We were trying to figure out what to do. It was literally like a few hours before just then. We were like, what? Like, does Giles stay? But you've been around us the whole time. So, yeah. But um, yeah, so Giles isn't joining us for this one, but that is okay. Um, yeah. So what what have you been up to for the past like... I know you've been in England for two weeks, a week, longer? I uh, don't actually know. I tried thinking about this like yesterday. Mm-hmm. I think I arrived maybe like 10 days ago, mm-hmm. something like that. So it's like a bit more than a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where did you go first? Um, we arrived in London and stayed in London for like two nights and like one training day, like in between. Nice. And then we... Moved on to Brighton mm. straight afterwards. Wow, that was compact. Yeah. You went, Bright- yeah, London. I saw clips from London of you and then Brighton as well. Mm. Um, you hit some fucking crazy. I think Benj did it as well, but the standing pre down, you stuck it. Oh, yeah. Brighton. Yeah. I don't know where the spot is, but it looked fucking sick. Mm. Mm. Do you like Brighton? Yeah. 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 It looked fucking nice. It's um, just a bit like Brighton just feels like positive when you get there. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's got the good vibes, I feel like. Mm. But I think, did you not hit Bristol while you were here this time or was that another time as well? Bristol? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went Bristol for a bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when we went Bristol, it was mainly like shit weather, like Mm -hmm. raining like, I don't know for how long we were there, maybe two or three days and it was raining like almost every day. We Mm -hmm. got like a part of a day all right for training. Mm -hmm. mm. Why did you, I mean, obviously we had Project Underground that we've all just been to, which was a fucking sick event. Um, but why England in February? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was because we wanted to go Project Underground. Mm-hmm. And then because, I don't know how we sorted that out, but we got the opportunity to do like a workshop at Project Underground. So that was like how I decided that I was going as well. Um, so then I knew that I was going to Project Underground and then it just made sense. Like, cause the weather's like, it's not the best, but you get some dry days, which mm. I don't get in Sweden. So I just saw that. Yeah. I'll just try to come a bit earlier and just maybe be able to train a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. Is this, what, the weather in Sweden worse right now than here? Yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, it's a bit like back and forth all the time, but it's definitely not really like we don't go outside and train just yet. Mm-hmm. Like we might have... Even on dry days, is it just too cold or just no dry days? Not really even no. get dry days. Like we might get like half a day that's dry. And then mm-hmm. you go like, oh, you get like, you get that little bit of hope and then just get shut down, like mm-hmm. snow or rain or both, or, you know, just like, nah, can't trust it. I feel like a lot of people don't actually give too much thought to the people who are living in countries that literally for winter, they can't train outside. Because yeah. in England, at least, yeah, like you get shit weather in, in the winter and maybe on the lead up to spring or like late autumn, but we can still get some dry days in. But yeah. there's obviously some places that people just can't train outside for like a whole season or something. Yeah, yeah. So that's fucking fair play. But yeah, we went to Project Underground. That was sick to see you, Lester and Kip- Kipper. You, Lester and Kevin all together, which was really cool. Mm. Um, Kevin did fucking crazy in the, in the comp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you expect him to do that well for, for skill? Because you know him better than I do. Because I didn't know that he'd... Because of what he uploads, he uploads mostly like style stuff. I yeah. didn't think that he was that mental at skill challenges. I don't know. I just kind of see Kevin as like a wizard. Like 
Yeah. He can pull anything out of his little bag and I don't know what it will be, but I know that he's going to do it right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but no, not really. I, did, I didn't really know that he was going to do so well in skill, I guess. Because like you said, he mainly does like flip based stuff, I'd mm-hmm. say, and then just like some vaults around it. But, you know, I, I've always known that he's got like great jumps as well, but he just doesn't really do him that much for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, it was fucking, he smashed the event. It was just nice to see you guys train. And uh, yeah, I feel like that was the first time I got to probably hang out with you three and like bond with you and actually just train a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, so that event went past. Uh, thoughts on the event? I think it was good. Yeah, yeah, it was sick. I think it was fucking good. I mean, it was, I didn't compete, mm-hmm. which was fine. But if mm-hmm. you're not competing, it's like you don't get to train that much, mm. which is like, Totally fine because yeah, know I mean? it's always something like going on that is very fun to be around. Just like watching a competition or just watching the people prep for the competition, but that just made me not like train that much. Mm-hmm. But that was kind of chill as well because like because I've already been out here for like a little bit. It was kind of nice to just like have an area that I know I'm going to be in for like a couple of days and just like meet people and have fun and watch mm-hmm. the other people competing and just like you know having fun pretty much. Kind of like nice. socialize a bit with PK people and just yeah, chill, exactly, yeah. yeah. It was funny, yeah. I felt like we were just when there was time on the course, when people weren't competing, you just literally just come in for like a few little <laughs> challenges and then dart back out. Yeah, like it, half an hour, like yeah. in and out. Yeah, it's, also, it's awkward as well because you kind of you don't know whether it's meant to be like practice time or training time. So you're just sneakily going on the course, getting a little bit done, yeah, and then yeah, coming back yeah. on. But yeah, and then I mean to wrap things up shortly. Recently, we then tried to come home a few days ago. And then I crashed my car. <laughs> First time Joel's been in my car. And we got 20 minutes away from Rotherham, um, just about to do a four hour trip home. And I think I've wrote off my car. But we're here. Do you know, when we left Nova, Kevin just like looked at me and like, as a joke, he said, yeah, Keelan drives a bit crazy, right? No. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, no. yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> that is not the, the best first impression <laughs> for driving at all. But uh, yeah, now we're here. I mean, I, I want to go, I know we do this with like everyone, but I don't actually know like your history with parkour. Like I don't know how you started, mm. but could you like kind of take us through how it began? Like what was the first thing that kind of got you into it or even the first thing you saw of parkour? Mm. Like were you coached? Or YouTube or? Uh, I could try. I do you actually try. have a story remember. from like the first time I heard about parkour. Yeah. <laughs> and that was in like preschool. I think, Preschool? I think so. Sick. So I would be like aged six, I think, mm-hmm. probably. And we were just like, you know, when you have the break, so you're just supposed to be outside all day, mm. pretty much, or like the yard. So we were just, we had this like rock, a big rock, and then like a pit of sand right mm-hmm. next to that. So we used to just like run and the kind of like plant a foot on the rock and then end up in the sand. Mm. And we were just doing that for fun. And then <laughs> like there was a teacher like walking by and she was just like, oh, are you guys doing parkour? And I was like, what? And she said like, oh, you know, those guys going on roofs and jumping and doing cool stuff. I was like, sure. <laughs> it's kind of cool that I remember that because I like literally the first time I heard of it. Yeah. And I went home and just like told my mum and I guess she like signed me up for something similar. Oh, that's but then I ended sick. up going like, I'm not even sure if there was like even that many parkour classes going, like going on in my area at the time, but I got mm. signed up for like circus school. Oh yeah, like it was yeah. like circus school, at least like the facility. I suppose that's but, like the closest thing if it's not. Yeah, yeah so it was basically just common. like acrobatics, I guess. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't really parkour, but it was just like movement and just like flips and mm-hmm. all of that. It's funny that you, if you track it back to that one, I guess, teacher, Mm, right. She get, she owes you a lot. <laughs> Don't even remember her name. But. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So did you, do you feel like you kind of started more on the flip based sort of thing rather than parkour itself? Yeah. Like you started with yeah, flips yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it was a similar thing to me. Mm. When was it, was it through, did you start going to like proper parkour classes at some, some stage that wasn't just like circus movement? Yeah. Things? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, th- I don't really know how old I was at that point. Cause I was doing like the, acrobatics for a while mm. uh which was just like you know, front flip back back flips and side flips pretty much mm-hmm. and then i think i found out about like the parkour classes in my area like a bit later um where i was still like a kid but still not like young young you know what i mean so it was, it was kind of like i don't know i definitely like sort of had some some flips and stuff already down when i started doing parkour mm-hmm. um 
I think it helps. Yeah, no, I definitely did. Mm -hmm. For movement wise anyway, I think just knowing flips because you kind of get to learn your body because that's kind of how I started as well. Just yeah. doing flips yeah. and then as soon as you start like getting introduced to jumps and things. Mm. It is it is really exciting though because I, I don't know if you felt the same, but as soon as you started learning about jumps and things, like the opportunity kind of gets a bit bigger because you sure. start like looking at spots differently and you can actually use spots rather than flips you can kind of do anywhere. But I'm not like shitting on flips because they're fucking sick. But No, but the thing is like I, I even went from like, from being like in acrobatics, or whatever, mm. with that came like the whole trampolining as well. I was mm -hmm. like a proper tram kid for a while as well. Really? Yeah. Yeah, we're making like backyard trampolining videos, you know, like three oh, kids in shorts giving like each other was... like double bounces and yeah. like triples with their backs. Like I was like one of them kids for a while. Mm -hmm. And then like my group of friends I was jumping trampoline with just like told me about, oh, like, oh, we should go do flips in the city at certain spots. I was like, what? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I think that's like, how I kind of faded into parkour because it was just like we could do this at different spots and that's mm -hmm. cool because we could do different things then you know what mm -hmm. I mean so it's like we started just doing flips on like the little balls and then like that kind of faded into parkour I guess that's um, sick mm. I feel like there was quite a big scene of because I used to sit and watch so much YouTube of like G trampers and things yeah and it looks a lot of it did look very like Scandinavian yeah like yeah. Swedish I think it was a lot of Danish people doing that really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and they were fucking sendy as well like mm. double bouncing and doing like triple codies and random yeah, shit and yeah, people yeah. flying over the nets and, <laughs> and stuff like that so you started off kind of in that area of things mm, mm. and then flips to to city kind of parkour vibes I, I i can't remember when i first saw or heard of you but i remember seeing this is when like a lot of people used to upload parkour to facebook yeah more like yeah. it was like youtube it kind of transitioned a bit to facebook and then I started seeing a lot of like comp lines from you. I don't know if we're jumping ahead quite a lot, but you were wearing, I think you'd wore harems. You started wearing harems quite a lot. Yeah, probably. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But was there like a big uh, motivational drive behind you training at that time for competitions? Or was that something kind of just on the side? I don't know. Like competitions, it's like, I've never been fully into like the competition scene. I've never mm. felt like I really want to like, oh, I want to go out and like learn these tricks because I want to do them in a competition. Like I've never really had that. But mm. for some reason, like competitions have been very like prominent in like the free running scene in Sweden. You know what I mean? Like for sure. It's just been a big part of it. It's so many, like a lot of the community is like younger kids pretty much, mm -hmm. <laughs> which all almost like for a while at least, they all just kind of went to these competitions. It was like the events always had these competitions like in them as well. Mm -hmm. so it was just like kind of a regular thing to do like it had to be in the competition so that was just it so mm -hmm. I like entered a few of them um, but I don't really know like I never really like paid much attention to like you know like training for the competitions and all of that but it was definitely cool to like be a part of it because that I, think I it know helps. it's definitely like something different to just training normally it's just like everything that comes with competing is just like very different and new and fucking scary to be honest yeah it like, is because even like building a line like i remember watching your lines and they always looked very like very clean and laid back as if you weren't trying like in the best way <laughs> which is really sick it's like what you want but like the scary thing of competitions i feel like is even if you feel like you've got a, a move mm. like i don't know swing double twist is it swing, like flyway double twist what's the actual name yeah, for it like, yeah yeah um, I think, did you need to do that in comp sometimes? Was it that or, um, maybe, or not that? Probably, I did. It's very uh, yeah. potential. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I just remember, I remember back in the day yeah. watching some of your videos and I used to be like, I fucking want to meet that kid. And it's weird like coming to this now. It's like we're sitting in the same <laughs> room this years here. later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, but like, let's take that trick, for example, like you feel like you could have it, but then as soon as it's competition, you put all these things together and it's like, if you're forgetting about the competition, it is just, I guess, a, a test of your ability to yeah. put it all together yeah. and just see, like, I want to see if this one, I can make it. Like, you're choosing the one to get everything together. And, yeah, which I feel like you just did very well. Whether there was, like, difficulty involved, there was mm. always, like, clean movement, which is sick. Mm. Oh, cheers. No, it's a bit, like, oh, I don't know. I don't really compete no more. Mm -hmm. But it's feel like it's really, like, impressive to see people, like, actually doing well in competitions mm -hmm. because I know how hard it is. It's like even just coming up with a line that is like, it's both creative and 
like the difficulty is high enough, but then you need to have like flow in there. Mm. And then like, once it's actually time for you to go, you're like completely shitting yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, was, I used to have so much adrenaline. It's like, you know, when you hear your song or whatever, like I know. You're, you're about to go. I used to just black out, you know what I mean? Like pretty much blacking out. Just like my it's body just starts up. moving and then it's just like, I'm just kind of gone in my head. And yeah, just like yeah. whatever happens, happens kind of thing. It was usually all right, but for the people going to like out of motion and all of that, like I couldn't even imagine like how nervous they are like before doing that. So it's really cool to see people just like having all of those moves down mm. and just like being able to pull it off in a competition. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's sick. That's cool. Yeah, I just thought maybe your mindset had like, check, cause I know that at Nova City you weren't competing in things. Mm. I was wondering whether maybe like you were more driven back then and now your training mindset has changed. But do you feel like from the start then it's always been a similar kind of just training for training sake yeah and yeah. then like when things come about like competition like trying it sometimes and then now you're like yeah i mean that's probably it I, I guess i trained for like training sake yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> but which is funny maybe it's training isn't yeah. it it's like just training for training yeah maybe when i was younger i was more into like the flip based stuff so mm. i had a lot more of like the quote-unquote like power moves mm. down which is like usually like in the style competitions gets you further right for sure and like recently i don't really feel like you know i have a lot of tricks i guess but i don't have them like as unlocked i guess mm -hmm. i just don't really feel as confident just like throwing out all these tricks mm. um and also like kind of building a competition line is usually a bit different to the way that i would usually train as well yeah so it just feels a bit unnatural like i don't know like building a competition line could just be like a connection of like three big moves mm -hmm. and then that just won't feel as natural to like my training style so mm. i just i don't know i just yeah, I think, I mean, you've got quite a unique style, I feel like, especially from the way you move in general. Like, if I was to take two different persons, Kong or side flip, obviously it'd be different. But like the way you, if I put you in a spot and the things that you'd find, I feel mm -hmm. like is quite unique because you obviously bring nowadays some of the like fundamental parkour things, but then when you build lines for like the Kipper videos and things like that, they're very unique, so... I don't know whether that's maybe changed over time and like, I mean, I would love to see that even in competition. You do yeah. <laughs> those type of lines. Um, just, I think my movement is still know. like very, it's not very like, I'm not going to say that it's not creative, but it's like, I don't do many like- It makes sense. Weird sort of like, let's say Kevin, like how many like mm -hmm. weird moves he can do that I can't even name. Like I can't do like 30% of the stuff that I see <coughs> people doing. Yeah. But I do like the fundamentals and just try to like do them bigger. Usually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is, I feel, uh, who is it you said this? Someone was saying Lisa's run at the competition was sick because it, it like made sense. Mm. And like when, like mm. when you see, especially moving for a space, it's really satisfying when you're like, yeah, that really makes sense. Yeah. Like it, yeah. and it can be creative and it could be something that you wouldn't have thought of, but like just not turning back on yourself too much in a line or something like that. Your movement is definitely similar. Like just makes sense when it goes through a spot, like flows through and doesn't oh, cheers, have any yeah, juttery bits yeah. or whatever. Is that something you focus on? Do you, do you feel like when you build a line, you focus on making it make sense? <laughs> that sounds really stupid. But uh, no, I know what you mean. Especially with, yeah. with movement as well, because it's clean. Like, do you feel like you're just moving or when you're doing it, you're thinking, you know, there's a move that could be a bit more difficult, but it would look not as good as this moving through a space. Mm, probably like, I don't necessarily like think actively like this line has to make sense. Uh -huh. but I will <laughs> definitely catch myself. Like if I tried to make a line and I'm, mm. I'm trying to put something in there that doesn't make sense, I would just yeah. go like, no, that's stupid. I'm mm -hmm. not even going to try to do that. I would just be dumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I just, I don't know. I guess I like, I don't know, I like like run up. Mm. I like speed and like power through like mm -hmm. run. And I guess having that kind of just like automatically makes the run usually kind of like make sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, you have got loads of power. I feel like more power than I thought as well. Mm. The more time goes on. Like I don't really, I think because I see you more as someone who, it's like Kevin, like I didn't know that he was that good at skill because it's mostly I see him do lines. Yeah, yeah. And I mostly kind of saw you doing lines with parkour-based movement. But then as time's gone on, you're like, for example, running prees. Like you mm. like your running prees, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like those are massive. 
And I think, yeah, I don't know. It's just cool to see you work on like kind of every aspect of moving. Mm, cheers. I want to get into so much more though. I think mm. about that all the time because sometimes I feel like I, not that I get stuck, but I feel like I'm doing similar moves like fairly often. Yeah. And then I look at people doing like, especially like the community from like, I think it's Japan where it's like so much new stuff coming out of like, especially like all the wall tricks where it's like planning like, yeah, the yeah. And fucking, then a hand and then mm. a twist and then like, you know, all of those sort of movements, I don't even understand like how they're doing that. And it'd be so cool to just like try to get into so many like different types of moving. Mm. You know, and I feel like there's so much more to learn that I just haven't even tried out at all. Yeah, but it's hard because it's almost like starting again, especially mm. if you want to put it in. That's the fun of it though, things. isn't it? Yeah, yeah it, is, it is definitely the fun of it, but it's like you got to end up putting in the effort in because I, I guess everyone gets like this, but you can get stuck just repeating yourself Yeah, because yeah. it does feel the same for a while and you you know it felt good the first time. And then you can kind of get stuck in a rut, but like if you can add something fresh each time you're yeah, training, yeah. it's like, yeah, Kevin was saying a similar thing, like scaring yourself every training session is a similar, is a similar sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's something new. Yeah. No, I'd like to see you learn, especially some of the, like the Japanese stuff and like, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just a matter of just like allowing yourself to feel like an idiot for a little bit as well. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, if I yeah, try yeah. to like figure something out. <laughs> and I just can't do it. I just feel dumb as fuck. <laughs> but mm -hmm. just put yourself through that and just, you know, get it to work in the end. Mm -hmm. mm. So we're on, I mean, talking about style and things, we've like moved down the list, but um, if someone was to ask or someone was wondering how they could find their own unique style, because I feel like everyone has, you know, if they relax into their body and things, mm -hmm. everyone has their own style. It's them. Yeah. Would you like be able to give any tips or like, are you, are you happy with how your movement looks or how it feels and things for uh, the most part? I think everyone yeah. can always critique themselves, but yeah. Yeah. I'm fairly yeah. happy. Like yeah. <laughs> I couldn't really do too much about it if I weren't to be mm -hmm. honest, but yeah, I'm fairly happy. But I don't know. It's kind of a weird thing. Like finding yourself is like mm -hmm. finding your personality. It's just like, yeah, yeah. you know, it sounds good, but it's hard to do like sort of mm -hmm. thing. But I think it's just based upon like, if you see someone like doing something and you can tell that they're like enjoying it, like mm. they're like fully in it, that's usually like how good Sal like ends up, you know? For usually, sure. Usually like if you have a mo like a movement type that you enjoy or like certain tricks or certain ways of moving and just doing that a lot is going to create a good style at the end, I kind of feel like. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's a good point actually. Maybe not putting so much stress on the style itself and yeah, focusing on the enjoyment of it. And then seeing what comes of that. Yeah. Because then that yeah. is your unique. Yeah. Because that's, yeah. I mean, the point of it is fun as well. But it's true. I always feel like when people relax more rather than being so like stern. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It like, it's just so much better because everyone obviously has a different body type. So parkour is always going to look different mm. for anyone. That, yeah, as soon as you relax into that and accept it, just anyone's movement can look so cool. Yeah. No, you for know? sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Rather than like, looking so compact and things. <laughs> but um yeah oh okay yeah this um clothing style mm. you're like i know you're quite inspired by skating and things mm. Mm -hmm. so do you i guess you've always worn kind of like baggy clothing and stuff but would you say that was max i think coming in thanks max yeah would you say you're very inspired by skating overall like style wise uh, yes, mm -hmm. I guess. It's just interesting because like, really you wear baggy clothing, which parkour have done from the start. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But there was obviously a massive debate with like skating and parkour and relating it with each other and things, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Like the whole debate is sort of like a weird thing at this point, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Cause I don't really, I didn't really pay much attention to it before it kind of like got to like a big thing mm -hmm. you know it was like discussions going on for a while because I kind of feel like me watching skateboarding or someone else watching like whatever thing that they enjoy doing they're probably gonna like naturally end up kind of like you take elements from it yeah sure. exactly mm. so to me it can kind of feel it just feels normal like wearing whatever I wear like a bit bag of pants like baggy pants or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
and I don't even think about like, oh, today <coughs> I'm going to dress up like as a skater. Yeah, you know I mean? exactly. Like, I, yeah, I yeah. I wouldn't think like that, and I don't think people do that. Mm -hmm. So then it's just weird to then hear people go like, oh, you guys are just dressing like skateboarders. We need to like, yeah, yeah. keep parkour to like being parkour, and you know, you know, like all of that is just a bit weird to me. It's just like people just dress as they want to dress. And that's it. And it shouldn't even have to be more than that. You know what I mean? I agree. I agree. And I don't think there's any shame in being like inspired by certain things. Like mm. if someone wants to dress because yeah, like let's say they've watched like, the skateboarding or I don't know, weird pick, but like tennis or I don't know, just <laughs> something like if that's what inspires them and then either subconsciously or consciously, they're like, I like what they wear. Yeah. Yeah. What, why is it bad to wear similar things? Like, you know, because yeah. yeah. everyone's individual, like parkour is just something they do. And then, yeah. Yeah. So I just think it's quite, yeah, it's quite interesting that there was that debate in the first place. Um, mm. But I, th I think, yeah. I guess it could mean something as well. Because mm -hmm. it's like the whole, well, I don't know too much about it, but I think like the image that skateboarding usually like uh, kind of promotes, it's just like, I know it's kind of like raw. It's kind of rough. It's just like mm. out doing whatever the fuck you want and just being free while while skating, you know? Yeah. And I feel like just wearing whatever, like, baggy shit and just throwing it on is kind of like, maybe that is because you almost resonated that more. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Points. Yeah, I suppose so. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I... I think... What do I think? I think it's fine to, to kind of copy skating in that way. Well, not copy skating, but I think it's all right to feel the same ways and like cross over the sports in in kind of that way. Yep. Um, I'm trying, I've lost my train of thought now. I was going to, I was thinking <laughs> it's because while you're thinking about that, I was thinking about, Oh yeah. And then there's the whole debate about parkour videos being the same as skating as well. Yeah. But I think you yeah. covered a lot of that on, I'd listened to, um, is it swapping shoes? Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And you talked to Lu Louise about similar things. Mm. Um, but I think it's kind of died down now. But yeah, it's just funny because especially especially keeper videos. Mm. I don't know whether it was that that got like mostly not attacked, but like spoken about. Maybe keeper and G fan. Mm, maybe, maybe. But um, yeah, what are your like thoughts on on that as a whole? Like, did that stop you wanting to do videos in that way, or uh, do you know no, what I mean? Because it not. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. No, I, I know don't, that like, I don't really have too many strong opinions about it. I just didn't no. really understand it. I was yeah, like, what, yeah, what's yeah. this? It's like, it's all a bit weird, but I think, I mean, it's definitely a thing. It's like copying shit is a thing. Mm. And it's like, you shouldn't really try to like copy things. It's more so just like grabbing inspiration a bit from here and there. But I think yeah. like the whole, I think to us, the whole mini DV thing was, was sort of like, I feel like parkour had an era where it's like, it all started to like kind of go in a direction of like, very nice camera equipment and all yeah. these like L lenses. And then they started to go on like glide cams and mm. being edited and like shot in sort of like a beautiful way where we kind of thought like the way that we trained just didn't really like resemble the same, like the same elements. Mm -hmm. So then just like <laughs> grabbing like my, uh, my grandmother's old mini DV camera and throwing like a shit like fisheye lens on top, just like was made way more fun and just like yeah. made more sense to us to just like use at the time. And it looked kind of sick as well. And that was like the whole, that was like, that was it. Mm -hmm. And we just didn't really think about, about it more than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I suppose it, it does show like you can make anything with anything. Well, mm -hmm. like obviously everyone uses their phone for Instagrams and things like that. Yeah. But yeah. it's kind of fun dipping back into like even older into cheaper things. Yeah. The cameras that you're using. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're, you're so right as well. Like nothing's original really yeah, yeah like it's always going to be traced back to something but uh yeah I, I i just like that you've managed to keep keep a like having the same aesthetic almost all the way through mm, mm. like it's kept something like this entity that doesn't really exist because it's obviously like it's a thing that you've created but it all feels very like whole yeah because it's yeah. all yeah it all like matches together like a puzzle <laughs> but it's <laughs> sick it's really really cool but um do you feel like you're gonna continue like like that all the way through or bring in elements of, cause I know we're going to get Lester on at some point and talk about like the editing style and things. Yeah, so I know yeah. he's inspired by like old school, like electronic music and things. So mm. there's definitely a theme throughout Kipper that's very like old school and inspired maybe by like the nineties. I don't know, but, mm. Mm, but you think maybe it's going to stay on that same road for now. 
I'm not sure actually. Mm-hmm. Like we haven't really put like a lock on whatever like aesthetic or style that we're doing. Mm. It's just like at this time and place we enjoy doing it. So we're just doing it right now. But I don't think that we've uh, completely like blocked out using like actual like HD cameras either. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's probably like depending on what videos we, we're trying to make as well. Because like 100% if you're trying to capture something and like actually get the detail in it, like filming it on a d- mini DV camera, it's just not yeah. the best idea, you know what I mean? Or vlogs or something. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is something that I put down as well. I'm terrible, by the way, I'm terrible at going through like in order all these things that I got down. But earlier I was just putting down notes because I was like, oh, there's so many things I want to know about. Yeah, yeah. But um, in terms of Kipper, there's obviously... There's a lot of people trying to kind of hit the YouTube game right now. Mm-hmm. Like obviously mm-hmm. we're trying to do it as well. And you got star, you got fat and you're obviously of, I mean, to me, similar gener- same generation of parkour and things, mm-hmm. but you're hitting like an alternative route with video parts and things mm-hmm. instead of doing like weekly content and trying to get involved in that game. Right. Do you think that's like, do you think that could be sustainable? For Kipper, because I remember having this conversation on the train, and you gave some like interesting points. Because people can hit the YouTube game because they want to be sustainable within parkour and maybe give themselves a career. Yeah, but I feel yeah. like you guys maybe are trying to hit something that is going to be more of like a long hitter, if that makes sense. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe supplying jobs for other people and yeah, yeah, hopefully. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Is yeah, I really don't know. But I think. <laughs> Uh, the way the way that we're going about it is is kind of more just like, like you said, how there's like Stora and Fat and you guys, all doing YouTube is kind of like, is really good for building a brand and like gaining an audience for, mm. for whatever it is that you're doing. Um, but it's definitely like, you know, it takes a lot of effort and it it has to be done in like a very honest way for it to like actually work. For yeah. like everyone involved as well, like having to be out training, but also thinking about filming everything going on. And it's just a lot that comes with that, that mm. I think that we just don't really want, want to do at the time. Um, Cause it's like, hmm, how, do, how do I phrase this? <laughs> um, I guess it's kind of like, it depends on what you want to build for type of brand as well. Mm-hmm. It's like I think that we might be more for what you call like community based, or like yeah. trying to gain like more of like fundamental, like trying to just show what we're about more so than like branching out massively at the at the time. Mm-hmm. So no, like, I get you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say that it is a commitment to trying to hit the YouTube game and be consistent in that way. Yeah, but it's also so much effort to save clips for long video parts like you guys do with Kipper Mm -hmm. and also like keep up social media on Instagram and things like that. Is that, do you find that a struggle? Cause I find it hard even when we're trying to make like frequent videos in their vlogs or just something like this to keep up something like Instagram as well. Not saying that's like what it's all about, but it obviously helps to keep things like flowing. Yeah. But if you guys are saving clips, is there, is it hard to almost like try and sneak things through for Instagram and like keep yourselves relevant or? It's a little bit weird. Yeah. Like Instagram is just a weird thing, isn't oh, it? Oh mate, it's so weird. Cause it's like. Cause it kind of feels that this, sometimes it feels like it's needed to keep relevant because everyone's using it, I guess. Yeah. That's the thing. But is like it? I don't know. Instagram, I don't know. Right? Yeah. I don't know. Like filming a video part and saving clips is like, we treat it as like the main thing. Yeah. Like if you're going out on the day, like you're trying to get that clip and mm. then you might be focusing on Instagram. Mm. Uh, but the weird thing is like sometimes just like sicker clips end up on Instagram because it's just like you just play around way more on Instagram. You know what mm. I mean? Like making like an Instagram line could just be, you're just like so much more relaxed. It's like, oh, I was going on Instagram anyway. Yeah. So just, like the clips just end up being way sicker, you know? Oh, really? Actually, yeah. yeah. Do you feel do you feel the pressure sometimes with saving clips with Kipper? Because we've had it in the past with yeah. something like Soul Destroy or whatever, especially mm. when everyone's like, you want to get clips. Yeah, yeah. Mm, and obviously you're making vid- video parts and making new ones every year. Do you do it every year? Or is it just like when it's ready, when the next one comes oh, around? Uh, pretty much when it's ready. When it's ready, yeah. It ended up being like every year. Every year, yeah. yeah. But like that's pressure because all of you are saving clips. Yeah, right? yeah. No, it is. It's kind of like it shouldn't be pressure because we're just kind of like showcasing our training. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's definitely kind of a feeling that you want to up yourself from 
last one, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is more so like I think everyone just puts more pressure on themselves, uh, kind of thing. But it's like a good pressure though. Mm. It's like I don't you're think it's deliberate. Feeling stressed it just really right. about it, but it's like you can you can tell that you're you're in for a mission, like you're in to really try to do your best. But I kind of like I I like it a lot because mm -hmm. then it kind of feels like you're not just going out training, but it kind of feels like you're going out training with like a purpose of just like doing the best best things you can do for like a little bit and trying to showcase that and it's, it's really cool and like helps you i don't know it helps your training to kind of feel like you're actually being a part of something like mm. kind of bigger you know mm. for sure it must push you as well like i think you definitely get a different type of training out of trying to save clips or pushing yourself in that way yeah because at the end of the day you're trying to make a film mm -hmm. and if you're going to put yourself through something hard it's going to come with a lot of attempts, which sometimes wouldn't happen if you're just training. Yeah. You know, yeah. because you're taking it chill and obviously you're, sometimes there's not that extra motivation to try and get the clip, which is not like, it's not what it's all about, like just getting a clip, but it definitely helps being there. And I just love seeing the battles as well. And I think that's important to show that through like, through your videos, especially, I don't know whether it was one of the enders I don't know which one it was for, but like you did a big running arm jump up onto something. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and seeing battles like that are just, yeah, I think they're so important. Yeah, no, it's so very true to like see that, at the same time. That wouldn't happen for like an Instagram clip. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, mean? or like if it did, like where it's going nowadays, you just see the make, like you just see the one where they yeah, get it because yeah. it, it needs to be fast paced, I guess, or but seeing it in like long form yeah, piece. Yeah. But I think it's just, it's just worth so much more to like ourselves. Mm. It's like when the video is finally done, you just like, you've done your best and it's all there in like one piece and you can finally be like really happy about the training that you've done and like put mm -hmm. so much hard work into and like all of that. Like I've literally had, like, I think we were making robots, like mm. when, whenever that was like maybe a year or two ago. And I was just like fully in it. I was like up at night, like thinking about what I'm trying to do with this video and like what clips I want to do and what wow. spots I want to hit and like, not being able to fall asleep and shit because of it, just be fully in it. Like, and it's, it's kind of sick to be honest. Like, it's exciting. That's really yeah. nice. I think it's great that you can have this much, this much extra to a sport and obviously other sports have it as well, but like that you can add something extra, which is we're going to make a video. And then that like excites you within parkour, yeah, which keeps yeah. you up and you're it's like, like sparks thinking about it. spots and you think about what you could do here and here. And that can obviously get, mixed up with you know getting excited for the wrong reasons or whatever but like you're excited to make this package this film that is like a memory that you can keep for yeah. yourself yeah. like you said you know of all of your like best training in one and then you get to keep that forever no yeah it really mm -hmm. is compared to it getting like lost in a feed which you can't see it does, do you know what i mean yeah, it? yeah yeah no it's weird mm -hmm. it's nice and i want to see more people doing it as well i know that like since the breach film obviously there are some people who are kind of mad about yeah. it or whatever and i don't know if that's turned people off doing long long form pieces for paid like paid long form pieces yeah um but i don't know about youtube i mean you guys haven't made a paid for piece yet have you no we haven't well, i know yeah. you haven't otherwise i said have you but <laughs> I, I kind of want you to because you're making the perfect like i don't know what your thoughts about it is but you've made so many for free now yeah i feel like no one would question if like one of the next ones would be like, yeah, you know, mm. paid for one. I don't know, it's, it's a hard thing because I feel like the videos that we make, maybe people think that we should have like charged for it because it's just longer. Mm. But I feel like if you're trying to charge for a video, you probably have to, I don't know, maybe not have to, but usually people really come in with like a different objective. It's like almost mm. telling like a story with a video. True, like yeah. Come into it as really like a, project of this is the movie that we want to make for this reason and all of that and i feel like we just don't really have that when we go into our videos because mm -hmm. we really just go out and like train and just film that and put it into like a sick longer piece right but we don't really like enter it thinking that this is going to be a piece that is good enough for people to like pay their money for mm -hmm. so i think maybe if we would make like a paid piece <coughs> we would probably have like a different entry to it you know mm -hmm. well, i think that I definitely respect you guys so much more after us doing like a few paid for things and you guys still release such crazy content for free. <laughs> just because like, yeah, you might say that like you're just training and like saving clips, 
but that is such a long time period and so mm. much effort mm. and like you said as well like thinking at night time like what spots you want to hit and what things you want to do like that consumes a large portion of time yeah yeah you know and then you put it in to something for free for the parkour community to watch which i just wish more people did and i wish that it would get more attention you know because of the effort yeah i mean it would be very sick if that was like the standard thing to do to be honest and i think I mean, it should be should just like the community should well it would like benefit a lot from it if it mm. was kind of like just normal to charge for your videos that you've put a lot of effort into that would just benefit everyone wouldn't it because mm -hmm. it would be even if it's just a small amount like like what three pounds for a video that would still just go to the creators of that video in mm -hmm. order to just make the next piece yeah and if because yeah like you said it was a bit weird like seeing all the controversy about like breaches film or whatever mm. like it's really not that much pain like a little bit for that sort of like actual film that they made yeah and <coughs> it probably like scares a lot of people then trying to like yeah definitely create something similar which is just like all go in the wrong direction because then if like if people actually just started to like charge a little bit for the videos that would just yeah just benefit everyone mm -hmm. yeah and um i think you're right about it should be kind of the norm really to save clips or or kind of go in that direction maybe that you are or saving clips because i mean it used to be with YouTube before Instagram and things. But if that happened more often, then I really think that we could have definitely like more of an economy and more people getting paid. And yeah, like you said, just three quid yeah. for saving your clips. If that was normal and people were like, yeah, I'll chuck money at that. Yeah, then yeah. the athletes can get paid to do more videos or make some clothes or just live, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it'd be great. And like, we were set, this is what I was gonna go on to earlier, but I forgot. Um, when we were talking on the train the other day and you were saying about trying to make something that gives the opportunity for like photographers within parkour or filmers within parkour mm. to actually get paid to do that would be really, really cool. Especially because yeah. you got the Kipper magazine and you're explaining, well, I don't know if you want to explain it now. It just sounded really cool. <laughs> like having like the advert spaces in the magazine and things like that, I yeah. think is a really good step forward. And obviously it takes time to push it. Yeah, but that would be this, like the same thing with like the videos as well. Like if people are able to just charge a little amount for the videos, like that amount could just like slowly increase over the time. Mm. And then actually maybe being able to, well, let's say like the filmer that came along to actually make the paid piece, he could get a little bit back and just maybe be able to work with that for a little bit at least. And that would just create more space for people to be able to, to do Barker videos. Mm. You know what I mean, like. For sure. Mm -hmm. What about the... um? Yeah, in the magazine, like, how do you, what's your plans for trying to get more people involved with that, um, like, photography-wise? Photography-wise? Yeah, yeah, just because you were saying, went with, obviously, that's parkour filmers and then parkour photographers, mm. like, you were saying something interesting about, like, paying for, you could, like, pay to advertise oh, yeah, in the magazine. Yeah, yeah. I just found it quite interesting, mm. like, I haven't thought about, I don't know if other brands have thought about that or whether, but it's quite an interesting no, what but it would you? just be cool to have the magazine at like a place where we could just, I don't know, like kind of create, not really a hub, but. I was going to say a hub. I feel like it could become maybe. a hub. <laughs> <laughs> but just like, yeah, like I said, like if we have, yeah, someone's going down in Bristol and we can't be there, then we can just shout a message to like, do you know, Ollie, mm -hmm. uh, just, I right, can you shoot Joe doing this fucked up shit in Bristol and then be able to support him like 50 quid for taking that photo and that, that could go split between him and and Joe. Mm. And then we'll get the photo back, which would just benefit the magazine for the photo being in there. And already there, it's like a small little like system going about, you know what I mean? And that, mm -hmm. that sort of thing could just like grow into just being like a little bit of like an economy within Yeah, or, exactly. Like those sort of things is exactly what we need to do to like actually just make it slightly more sustainable, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's all these ways, the long form video and the magazine and all of this stuff, which just, I guess, takes a bit more like, it's it's long to do these things. It's not like instant. It's like when you were, I mean, we were cutting tomatoes the other day and Joel was like, I've realized something. I like things that have an immediate, <laughs> what is it, an immediate effect? I don't know, like things when they immediately get done. Yeah, you, how do you do something it. you can tell. Oh, you get a result immediately. Reaction. You're like, yeah. I like this. <laughs> but yeah, like with these things, it, it takes time and, I, I hope that when, you know, the year 
later in years, like the parkour community, the next generations, they go for that, you know? Yeah. Like Instagram is always gonna be about, and I'm just noting Instagram, but um, yeah, people need to like see the, the like long picture, the long picture, you know what I mean? Yeah, right? yeah. And put the work in that's gonna, uh, yeah, it takes time, but it could benefit parkour in many ways, I feel like, and the new generations, which would be cool. Um, before I ramble on, you were talking to me about the next Keeper video as well. Oh, yeah. The other day, which is another undercover video. Yeah, undercover, underground. Yeah. yeah. Is it three or more? Like the th second, the, sorry, the third one or the second uh, one? Yeah, this would be number three. Number three, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any um, info on that? I don't know whether when we got Kevin on, you guys were working on it then as well. Mm, I don't know if it's been that long or maybe not. When was Kevin on? I don't know, we were in the last place. Do you remember that? It might have been like slightly um, slightly in the works, but now we've yeah. like actually filmed it. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's basically just a video all shot in like these undercover places, which is just basically anywhere that has a roof yeah. <laughs> because everything is just wet in Sweden right now and we can't just like sit on our asses for like six months and just like wait the snow out, you know? Yeah. Um, so the point is just basically like, it's a lot of like location scouting and just trying to find like anywhere where you could jump on anything during this time period and mm -hmm. then just show that in the best way possible in these videos. That's and sick. that has kind of created like a really sort of new thing to us because then it's just like this whole mission of just like finding like, well, it'll be like what a new garage to mm -hmm. go in and then like actually finding like curbs or whatever and like yeah. making that into a spot and then everyone finding like lines for them to do at these like weird little spots and like sh filming that. And it's kind of just turning like, turned to like a new thing for us that we kind of like Seems to enjoy it at this point, yeah. That's sick. Mm. Do you find that you do a lot of scouting for that? Like yeah, a lot of spot yeah, scouting? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like walking about city, you just see a garage. Yeah. All of a sudden that's interesting. <laughs> like maybe I should head down and just like see if there's a wall. <laughs> <laughs> see if there's a wall. It must be harder because I, I mean, I used to really like spot scouting on Google Maps and things. Mm. But with undercover spots, it's like that's a, a whole different <laughs> game because you, you have to be there and you have to know that there's garages about or just be a bit more sneaky. Yeah. But I know that there was, I don't know if it was the first undercover video you did. It was mostly in there's that one like underground parking lot thing, or it was like a loading bay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But now for this one, you feel like you've got a lot, do you feel like you've got more new spots included in it? Uh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, to be honest, it might look fairly similar yeah. because they're all like garages or loading docks. <laughs> yeah, but of course. We did uh, travel down to Helsingborg as well, which Sick. is where Kevin's from, mm. um, because he's been driving around quite a lot, just like gathering spots around there as well. Oh, really? So it's Sick. definitely like Sick. more spots at least. It might mm -hmm. look fairly similar, but they're more at least. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm. Oh, I don't know where I want to um, transition to this because I keep forgetting different things. But you were saying that we we're talking about Airwhip. I don't know whether you ever, did you have any like sponsorship or partnership thing with Airwhip ever or not? Uh, no, I didn't. didn't. It was actually like kind of in the works, but it really? just didn't happen. I always saw you and like, oh, not always, but there was a time where I thought you were just an air whip, like you were part of it <laughs> somehow. Like, I don't know. And I also thought it was so close, but apparently not. It's like five yeah. hours on the train or something crazy yeah. from Stockholm. Um, but yeah, that's a far away, that's far away from you. But Kevin is not part of Airwhip anymore, is he? Not anymore. Uh -uh. But he's just like, he's always been around those guys anyways. And mm -hmm. that's the thing, like I kind of was too. So I guess that's why you got the mix up as well. Like I used to just, well, I do know all of those guys and I just train with all of them all the time. So that's mm. just like, yeah. Mm. I mean, was it the first, was it the first parkour gym in Sweden to open or was there more before that? No, it probably was. I think it it's was, what, yeah. nine years ago now. So it's yeah, probably yeah, the first yeah. one, yeah. So I suppose, yeah, it was quite a, I reckon it, everyone from Sweden was drawn to that gym. Mm, so mm. I just saw so many like parkour athletes training in it. It was hard to know if there was like frequent faces. I didn't know whether like maybe they were part of it or something, but. No, but yeah. it's sick because like Helsing Helsingborg is such a small city as well mm. compared to like Stockholm, mm. but they have so many people training around just because of that gym. So it's like mm. any day you go to the gym, there's just people training. That was, was like so sick about it. So mm -hmm. I just loved going down there and just like meeting everyone and training with them. It's just like, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if you ever had that where you go to a place and you like surprised by the community. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, just, fully. Like, so I many people it. training in like a strong community. Mm. Yeah. What was your community like growing up in Stockholm? Because I know you were saying 
that it might be kind of dead now, is it, ish? Yeah. Not as many people training, but back in the yeah. day, was it was it better? Uh, or- so like when I started out training, there was this team or group of friends uh, called Free Running Sweden <laughs> nice. around Stockholm. And they used to like be kind of in for it. Like they made tons of videos and like jams and events mm. and all of that, which was kind of sick. Um, so there was quite a lot of like, like there was kind of like the generation older, right? <coughs> yeah. And then a lot of kids like my age started like going to their classes and all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but like a lot of them now have kind of turned to the point where they're either having to work too much to like actually be able to train because it like, you know, just kind of grew out of it. But then some of them just kind of faded from parkour into tricking now. <laughs> right, yeah. So there's a lot of like, a lot of them are still around, but they're not really like out training that mm-hmm. much anymore, but I still see them a lot, yeah. Yeah, is there quite a big tricking community in Stockholm then as well? Or is it yeah, just- Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the, the main parkour gym called Street Mentality. Um, like the main community in there is basically just trickers, mm-hmm. yeah. Which is, I don't know whether that's, do you train with them quite a lot? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Because you, like we were saying before, you have got all these solid parkour movements, but I have seen a lot of clips of you basically kind of like tricking, not tricking like lots of kicks and stuff, but. Yeah, no, I, I can't do the kicks, but yeah, I definitely but enjoy like, the corks. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like that's definitely helped in some ways probably. Yeah, yeah. Being able to train with people like that. But, no, uh, for sure, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's it's weird how I guess some somewhere like Helsingborg can draw in that many people. I mean, I suppose because of the gym, but then Stockholm. Would you say it's bigger, like as a city, more as? I mean, area wise, definitely bigger as a city. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I but it know, helps having that hub isn't I feel like, like as as well together in mm-hmm. Stockholm. I'd say, but. Mm-hmm. All right, let me check my notes. I'm such a fucking professional. At this. Mm. Also, I'm very <laughs> ill, so I feel like I'm like fading in and out of like. Focus while talking, it's like, <laughs> it's like almost, yeah. It's all good. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, unfortunately we couldn't have Giles on, but you know, he's chilling at home. I think he did one podcast ever without me as well. And that was it. So maybe it's slowly falling apart. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. <laughs> so a lot of people I don't think know this, but how are you, um, how do you keep up with all of this? Like what's what's keeping you financially Stable. Oh, What's your secret? My secret is, <laughs> uh, well, I only train parkour and for work, I do falafel. Yes. I falafel as a job, <laughs> yeah. No. <Nice. laughs> Are you good at it? Do you feel like you're good at making falafel? I'm not Why actually haven't you made sure. Fa- you're not sure? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. Because the thing is like, I don't know if I told you, but I just, I just enjoy like all food. Yeah, right? yeah. And I think that kind of makes me like a bad chef because I wouldn't really like, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know no, yeah, like yeah, a yeah. little less salt or pepper or this or that. I just don't really care. Yeah. But I get the wraps together. So like, I think I'm doing all right. Yeah, you yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Is it, I feel like a lot of people don't know that. Well, I definitely didn't, but there's a lot behind a lot of parkour athletes, even if, I mean, you got the question. We did 10 questions yesterday. Was it last mm, night? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did Was it you who got, do you consider yourself a professional? Yeah. Yeah. And your answer was like, no. No. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. Which I think to a lot of people would say you are professional, but I suppose there is always something behind that. It's like, I think professional kind of means like, do you live off parkour, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I just couldn't say that I do. Yeah, I know. Which I is mean, like, I wish I could say a, that I was a professional, but I know. I'm just not. You know what I mean? It's just, like, it's like, it's a shame. Like that's kind of going back to, we all need to think about benefiting parkour for the long run so that more people can be professional because it's a sick thing when they can be. Yeah, yeah. But like, at the same time, it's a bit like me doing falafel, like having a, a part-time job or whatever. Isn't, mm. I don't feel like mad about that because I'm kind of, mm. I'm kind of all right with having a job that's like, all right. Nice. And then I could, you know, be able to just like sustain myself and then being able to just do parkour exactly the way I wanted to. Yeah, I suppose it's less pressure, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it's, yeah, this is how I make my money and then this is how I choose to spend my time training because there's no other thing that's making me train, right? Mm. And mm. you can work on Kippa freely and things like that. Yeah, I, I mean, it'd be sick to actually make enough money from parkour, mm-hmm. but then like but I, yeah. not having to sort of stress about that might, keep what we're doing more genuine as well, mm-hmm. you know, cause we're not trying to 
make it fit to like an algorithm or a certain way of making a video to attract more attention or whatever. Like we could just be as honest as possible with it because of that. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's why we kind of try to slowly like build a more like community type based sort of like content or style. For sure. What we're doing. Cause we're not really trying to like, I don't know, like we're not stressing. We're not in a hurry mm. to like sort of make money from parkour. That mm. way. Yeah. Which means though your, your stuff will stick. Like it's not attaching to any sort of trend or, or something like that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's very like standalone. Like that's your, that's Kipper's thing there. So it's like, if you're carrying on at that pace, it's like, it's gonna go somewhere good. And it is already gone somewhere good and it is something good. But um, yeah, I think it's nice that it's not like a, it's a rush and it's your own pace, but it would be sick to get to the point where it's like, all of you can benefit off of all the hard work you've already put in. And then you can just chill and do parkour and like make this stuff for the community. Yeah, and things. yeah. Um, classic question, but where do you see yourself in five years? Five years. It can sometimes be a horrible question for some people. Yeah. For, no, yeah. I definitely see myself training like a yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be what, like 25 in five years. Yeah. Which is still chilling, mm -hmm. big chilling. I, I hope I'm like, training a lot and like doing something sick with Keeper, mm. uh, whatever that would be. Um, maybe being at a point where Keeper's like bigger and we can do a lot more with it. Mm. Maybe magazine's bigger. Yeah. And we can have a lot more projects going on that actually like, involves more people would be mm -hmm. really cool. I think so too. Mm. That'd be really, really cool. Mm. Yeah, I suppose basically doing what you're doing now, but to just bigger and better. Yeah. No, 100% <laughs> kind of, which, is, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of anything, anything extra, like little details that I want to, because we talk while we're here, but there's little details that I want to see if I can kind of get out of you. Oh, okay. I want to talk about shoes because... You, I don't know how long you've wore, well, there started to be a thing where a lot of people started wearing more thinner shoes for parkour and it's like yeah, yeah. coming in and then it was more like skate shoes because they're a kind of a nice balance. Um, and then I've seen that you're wearing a shoe that has, for people who wear 3MCs, they'll know the sole, but they're like a shoe that has a, a similar sole to 3MCs, but it's different. Yeah, yeah. The Boosnitz, I don't know how you pronounce it. Yeah, I think it's Boosnitz, vulcanized version, mm -hmm. maybe version two even, mm. which is just, it has the same sole as the three MCs, but then I find like the upper material to just actually hold. Yeah, <laughs> and more not durable. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. What made you turn into like, I don't even know what shoes you started out with, but they're quite. Oh, I wore Kalenji's for a bit. Kalenji's, yeah. oh shit, <laughs> fair enough, <laughs> I didn't have those. I, I don't know, I've worn a bit of like this and that, but then mm. I kind of just found out that I like a flat shoe. Yeah. You know? Um, I don't know why, because it kind of just feels like you can feel what's going on under your feet at all times, mm -hmm. but you're still just like kind of a, you're kind of like flat with the ground. Because mm. I don't really like, what's that shoe called that everyone wears? A Reebok Classic. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, those are probably great for training, but when I wear those those type of shoes, it kind of feels like I'm on top on something. Yeah. Like a little plateau. Oh, I know what and you that mean. That just feels so, it feels so dangerous for my feet, like ankle thing and whatever. Yeah. It just feels like. Yeah, I had a, uh I had Reebok Classic as well. They are good for training in, but with like sudden uh, direction changes, because my ankles are crap anyway, I do roll my ankles because you are like raised. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But it, it's like, I guess it's all personal preference because some people do just prefer yeah, the thicker yeah. sole. And I don't think there's like a right or wrong, but I think it's interesting to see more and more people wearing flat sole shoes. Yeah. And I can see... From my opinion, I, I can see more better foot placement from people. Do you know what? <laughs> yeah. Not from the people who are wearing it, but like I think it definitely drills that element. I think back in the day as well, like I even did it. You'd carry two pairs of shoes. Oh yeah. You know I mean, like one with thicker sole, one with thinner. Like I've actually never done that. Really? I usually get a pair of shoes and then I wear and it. And it's just it's that gone. shoe. And then yeah. I get the next pair. <clears throat> like the Star, I think the Star boys still. Some of them still do that. Sometimes they'll wear. They'll bring like a thicker and a thinner. Yeah. And I think for anyone who is wearing always thicker shoes, it's just try and like test yourself and get some thinner shoes just to do some smaller things because I think it can help. You're right, like being able to feel things and being flat, like level without being, yeah. having a raise, I think is quite important. Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, it's just like to get a good balance. Like I kind of feel like some flat shoes can just 
kill your feet as well. Yeah, that's the <laughs> like thing. Like, I don't know how good they are in the long run for your actual feet, whether they're just gonna be I mean, fucked, but. It just depends on how it feels, I guess. But like yeah. a regular, like maybe Vans old school, that isn't mm-hmm. the pro version, it just kill my feet. I get like, I hurt just walking around in them. Yeah. To be honest, like, I think they're blister, they, they give, blister, they give everyone blisters anyway. I mean, they get they gave me blisters when I had them, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, the fact that them being skate shoes just like makes sense, I guess. Cause like, if you want a flat, a flat shoe, with good grip that also like is durable. Yeah. Like they just sort of made for that, you know what I mean? So it just like makes sense to wear it. Of course it does. Um, bloggy? Sorry, I'm, bloggy. I'm calling you in. Before I it's move on. Weird you mentioned the shoe thing because I was literally just thinking like, oh, it'd be kind of interesting to go into the shoes because we were just talking about that before. Mm. Oh, really? You started, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to ask you wanted to chime in because you've, be, you've been there. Have you got anything extra I mean, to add? the shoe debate is a classic. I, I have a, a question actually. Mm. I mean, so you've been training for a while now. Like, have you had any like injuries that you've gone kind of like, oh shit, like I need to do something about this or you <coughs> know, it's like things about your body and then you've kind of been able to like nip that in the bud anything like that i've never even spoken to you about injury i don't even injury. think i've I'm even seen you injured no um you've been lucky the whole time <laughs> almost <laughs> when i was like maybe oh, i don't know maybe 13 <coughs> 14 yeah. i had like bad knees for a bit mm. um not tendonitis or so, oh, you think no i don't think that so sounds like a growing age yeah yeah maybe because i think a lot of people were kind of going through it at that time and people just always have like fuck knees, right? So I wasn't like too worried about it. And I think I went and like got it checked and he just told me to do some squats basically. <laughs> really? <laughs> and yeah. it sorted it out. That's yeah, good. and then it and then it was all right. And since then I've never really had like any any longer injury apart from like <laughs> I broke uh, a bone in my thumb trying to do B mixing. So I had oh, really? for a while for a summer. <laughs> But so everyone just asked me like, oh, what you've done? And I was like, oh, I tried to jump with my bike, you know. But <laughs> more than that, I never really had a, a injury that like, kept me from training for a long mm. period of time. But I will say though, like, I definitely need to start stretching more. Because yeah. I, I often feel like, I don't know, I'm not like limited by it, but I feel like I, my training would just be like 100 times better if I was just like a little bit more flexible. Yeah. You know, probably like prevent injuries as well. It's something that, yeah, it's effort and you have to keep on top of because I think I wish that too. Yeah. But um, yeah, do you, do you train quite, your training's quite crazy because you do a lot of hard stuff, but I guess like, I don't even really see you bail that much, but you're mm. just hiding it. You're hiding all your bail clips. <laughs> I, uh, maybe, I don't know, actually. I don't, I don't feel like I bail that much. I just, I, didn't, I, wouldn't I don't think like you would. falling over. Yeah, you know what I mean? So I just like, I fucking love it. No, it yeah. might take a lot of attempts, but I don't feel like I've, all over that much maybe I'm, mm-hmm. I'm keeping it very safe you know yeah maybe i wonder whether that like adds to the your style just being so chill maybe because you're just like going at your own pace but still pushing it i don't know if that adds up yeah like slowly pushing <laughs> yeah. it and not just like going for not stuff. like ahead of your ability so it looks like crazy or something like that mm. mm-hmm. yeah you said you said about bmxing and one of my things was on there was about like other things that you do that aren't parkour mm. Because I, I didn't know, I, I mean, I'm stupid, I think, because obviously you release a lot of photos as Kipper, but you do a lot of photography. Right, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you were explaining how, I think, well, is it, it, I'm ruining the 10 questions here, but because <laughs> there's a 10 questions <laughs> yeah. thing about it. But um, yeah, can you relate photography with, um, with parkour in any way, like as a passion? Do you know what I mean? Like the feeling towards it, or is it quite... I think it's quite different, right? You explained in the 10 questions. Yeah, like it's it a is. nice contrast to be able to have passion for this because it's a different feeling. Yeah, almost. yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, it could be kind of like, not similar to parkour, but it can mm. like, it can definitely be a way to like express yourself in mm. a similar way. But it's definitely like the process of taking a photo is like so different from like making a line or like prepping of for course. a jump or whatever. And I think... I don't know. I just enjoy having like something that I'm fully into that is in parkour as well. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it's sick. You do a lot of good. I just like how natural you are, especially when the past few days when we've all been together, like you noticing something happened, but something's happening and you're getting like the flash out. And I think you gave like the flash to bloggy and like, you know where to stand them (laughs) and things. And I, I don't, I mean, there's a lot of people who take parkour photography, but I don't think I've seen too many weirdly i don't think i've seen too many people experiment with flash which Mm. is such a normal thing but like 
he seemed to know where to put it. And I know there's a lot of skate photography yeah, that yeah. use flash in a very good way. Yeah. Um, did you take any inspiration from that or? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. From like a lot of stuff. I'm still trying to figure it out, to be honest. It's mm. a bit of a mess. I don't even understand the flash yet. It has really? like one setting that works and I just go with that. <laughs> uh, I've, I've probably gathered a lot of my inspiration for the photography from, um, you know, Ryan Kelly. Yeah. Who shoots a lot of photos and mm. he came to Stockholm for a bit and he just had the full setup. Yeah, like, you know, all like <coughs> both fisheye, but just like a bunch of lenses and like, mm. He was always carrying around the flash with the tripod and always just like spotting these scenes and like having the whole, I don't know, he really had like a cool process to it. Mm. And I kind of took a lot of inspiration from that because his photos just looks fucking sick, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and just like having the flash just makes sense for shooting things that move. Yeah, no, it's true <laughs> as well. Like, I, that's why I'm confused why not too many people use it. I mean, maybe they do and I'm just not seeing it, but mm. like, it especially makes sense if you want to get things that are like, the actual one of something like i know we were you, you're taking a lot of photos of like sam doing the pre and things but yeah, yeah in skateboarding i've seen a lot of uh well i mean we did it with soul destroyer max doing the kong pre which was none of us who took the photo you know the imax kong pre yeah yeah but yeah. like a lot of releases of photos before like an actual jump is done yeah i think it's such a good way of like just pre-hype but also there's a lot of skill in it definitely mm. and the flash definitely helps and no, i, I mean, want to see more of that like both freeze the photo mm -hmm. obviously but then also to kind of create is this a different this setting look? like a different yeah 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 it just looks you can make it kind of look however you want then just like mm. based on where you put the flash and how you use it like you can either just try to f like freeze it but then you can also put the shutter speed to a lower number so you can kind of get movement into the photo like almost like parts of the image being slightly blurry like the background could oh be blurry, yeah yeah the person being frozen so then that like gives you know, you can see that something's moving, but it's still frozen in the way and you're just like, you know, using, I don't, I don't even know all of this. Like, I'm, I don't even know shit about cameras, but you can do so much. No, but it. I can tell you've worked it out from just, because that's that's it. Like, the more you do it, you're just going to work this shit out. And that's part yeah, of it. And that's yeah. the fun of it as well. But yeah, what like as in you can use the flash to light up the subject and then like the, can make the background blur out. And yeah, stuff and yeah, yeah. Like one of, there's a photo of, is it Lester or is it Hugo? Lester, yeah, yeah. Is Lester jumping in the background and mm. yeah. No, that's sick and no, it's cool just like having another perspective of everything because yeah. like, you know pretty much all the parkour that you see is like video yeah I, yeah I you can take like this, screenshots yeah. of a video but like taking photos and looking at photos is just like a complete different perspective usually of course yeah yeah, yeah. And it's really fun to try to figure that out as you go because it's, it's a bit weird like if you see someone doing something like a cool jump like it's kind of plain to just film that you know, like, you know how to film a jump and then like taking a photo of that and making that look interesting is just like way different. It's kind of hard to do, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you're capturing a specific moment of that jump in a, like the freeze frame of it. Mm. And you can see every kind of detail, yeah. like the way their body is on that, like video goes past quite fast unless it's slow or whatever, but, and you can see their facial expression. There's just like so much in it. And obviously yeah. framing as well is a big thing and, and all that. Um, would be cool for you to, I mean, I don't know where Kip is properly heading but like even in the future to do i don't know what channel did it but there was a video on like how to use a fisheye properly for skating yeah with yeah. vx and like those things i think should exist more in parkour for even sure, even like sure. everyone films with their iphone and there's people who know how to film iphone clips better than others yeah yeah and like you know how from your experience like the way you like to take photos is the way you like to take photos mm. and I want to see more videos of people like you going. I don't know it's like a tutorial, but like more just tips. Yeah, I mean, this it's so sick. Much I like to, that, uh, especially oh fuck, even like the Kipper videos. Mm. Like you film it in a certain way, and yeah, there's all these things that are missing from parkour that I feel like. No, we could, could definitely cool. dive into like mm -hmm. a lot more of that stuff. Like like you said, like shooting photos or video, just like being mindful of what you place in your frame and what mm. what sh maybe shouldn't be seen in frame because it doesn't add anything else to it. Like all of yeah. that stuff is like very important and like interesting. Mm -hmm. Like in a, I try to think about that stuff like shooting a Parker photo is like, and someone's doing a jump, I'm not just trying to capture the person in the air. Mm. Cause then I'm not, <laughs> I can't tell where they're jumping from or where they're going yeah. or maybe showing the gap underneath or like, you know, if I, I, <coughs> a jump is usually like, it's like cool because of, a certain thing, maybe a drop or the length or an angle or mm. whatever it might be, then trying to bring that into the frame and like showcase that in the best way. It's usually like the point of trying to grab a photo. 
that mm-hmm. makes sense yeah, for sure. I mean, it's the whole thing. Put it's together. very easy to miss, but just like trying to work that out, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's sick. I, I've, I've, I rate it highly, and I, I yeah, I just want to see more of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna dive back into Bloggy again because I know that he might have stuff or he might not, but <laughs> he feels left out. And it's also like I'm so not used to doing this on my own, so it feels nice to just go Bloggy. Bloggy. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> just in um, case there's anything to add. <laughs> I mean. It's been quite informative, to be honest, but, um, damn, this is so, this is so on the spot. <laughs> you started off so good. Well, it's been quite informative, so, um, uh, cloudy skies. Uh, and, uh, cloudy skies. <laughs> RAF Mona. Um, no one's going to get that. No, no one at all. <laughs> but, I mean, mm-hmm. it's, to be honest, like, for, from my perspective, just, like, as a kind of separate topic, like, mm. seeing... Like, uh, like meeting someone in person, like meeting you, Joel, has been quite interesting because you, like even meeting Keelan, like it's been, it was a very interesting because you always see people online and how they present online and such. Oh, true. And I, I definitely had this like impression of, of Keeper being very genuine because I remember 2016, I met Kevin when he was like a kid, mm. you know, for love. And then like you guys wrote like an article about us and in, in like the, the magazine about scruffy and stuff and that was really interesting and then in my mind i was like hmm, i wonder what this would be like you know like actually training these guys and like what that'd be like and it you know it feels very genuine and like fully it's kind genuine. of nice to go back to that because i i felt like there was this time in parkour where it started to become less like you could just turn up at a random city and get hosted and train with people that started and fading it, away right yeah and yeah. i feel like since covid actually maybe it's coming back yeah, Perhaps, mm. which is kind of ironic, but it's mm. good. So, yeah, yeah, me- <laughs> yeah, no, fully, yeah, meeting you. Like, I mean, we've met quite a few times, but I, yeah, definitely, this is the first time we've actually probably got to hang out, especially with Lester as well. But I think you guys all together in Kipper are very genuine and bringing back that feeling of like you're who you say you are. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Online, apart from that, I think Giles was like annoyed i don't know if you told you this he's annoyed how nice you are because you could look like really smug and stuff like cool and then you're just like overly nice i hate that i wish i looked nice <laughs> <laughs> you do look nice. it was like when we were getting petrol the other day and you, you guys were waiting and you know you can't go in and it's like you see kevin on the phone to his girlfriend while looking in it's like oh it's kevin there and then joel looks like he's gonna rob it <laughs> With his hood up and his baggy trousers, and it's like because I know you, it's like the complete opposite. But from far moment. away, it's like it's, yeah. It's I was funny. just trying to get a veggie sandwich to the door, but she looked so scared as well. That was yeah. moments before the crash, and the woman looked terrified. That was moments before. Oh the crash. my god, uh huh. That was great. Mm-hmm. No, you don't look scary. I don't think you look scary. But, you know, mm. was it? <laughs> has it been? I mean, I guess it's fine because you know English and stuff. But we were in the. Sh- this is so not related to parkour. But earlier you said about going into the shop and it just it's a bit big for your liking, and it was taking quite a while for you to find oh, what yeah. you wanted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I relate to that with like being in European or Swedish stores. Is kind of like. Oh yeah. I just don't. Of course, I just don't know the one. I don't know the route of stuff because us two know the route of that Sainsbury's now. Mm. We'll know where not to go. We've learnt it. So we're quick. No, that makes sense. I, I kind of find it just a bit. Well, I mean, either confusing or fascinating. Just seeing <laughs> products I haven't seen before, like oh, yeah, 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 all these fucking like sausage rolls and shit. I just don't have back home that much. It's just like on the regular shelf out here, and just like, really, yeah, yeah. And just like figure out what stuff is, and then trying to figure out where I'm getting my stuff, and then how to pay, and just like. <laughs> <laughs> and there's so many different shops as well. So it's like you figure out Sainsbury's, and then you go into a little or. Oh yeah, or an Audi, it's and it's completely different. Experience, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, I suppose. Do you, you have? Is it? Do you have Lidl and Audi in Sweden or neither? Uh, we have Lidl. You have Lidl. I'm not oh, yeah, sure okay. about Audi actually. Oh, okay. What we don't have is the meal deals. Yeah, oh shit! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Kevin was if people don't know that, yeah, I don't know if it was you or Kevin said that yesterday. Maybe you were uh, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna miss meal deals. I'm like, what? Oh yeah, that was me. I'm so gonna miss meal yeah. deals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? It's so easy. It's like you need to eat. You go get a meal deal. You know what it's gonna cost, and you, you know. <laughs> about what you get. <coughs> Fucking hell. I love it. it. Sounds like you're killing me, but I've just got... COVID. COVID. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's um, uh, it's nice just hearing all of this because, I, I've, I mean, especially me, I feel like I've missed just hanging around with par- the parkour community that isn't from England. Mm. 
like it used to feel so normal to be with so many different people from different countries and stuff. And then since COVID's happened, like, yeah, everything kind of felt very like segregated and now it's kind of coming back and yeah. Like, like for a while it kind of seeing, felt like being back home, just training. It was always like, mm. not to sound like that. But it was always like same old, same old, yeah, you know, like same spots, same gyms, yeah. same people, same lovely people, but mm -hmm. like you're meeting the same people all the time. And it's like, kind of get stuck of like a way of doing things like even just training is like usually fairly similar mm. and then once we're now like starting to be able to just meet different people again it's just so sick because you start to just like feel that inspiration from different people again and definitely just like going new places like actually being to new spots it's just like a whole like breath of fresh air to be honest yeah it's a thing that comes with parkour and i wonder if there's anyone who hasn't really experienced that yet, who maybe either got into parkour during COVID or maybe just started taking it more seriously during COVID and they haven't like experienced traveling with parkour because it's, mm. it, it comes with it. Like, you know, go, going to a new city and new spots and meeting new people and being hosted by people you kind of don't one know, of but the best part parts of, about it. Yeah. yeah. It's one of the best parts about it. And I think that must, some people must just not know that that's part of it. Mm. Cause that's why a lot of people are drawn to it as well. Like not just the movement. Um, but yeah, like recently, I feel like it's been coming back. But then you're leaving tomorrow, and it's gonna go back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but it's been it's been lovely you being here, and yes, I hope yeah. that we can um, maybe hit up a little collab or something. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> no, it would be very sick mm. to uh, maybe hit a little motorcycle skipper thing. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm trying to think of anything I could, I've I've missed. I'm sorry if this has been very off and on i'm i'm ill and not really sure where i am and we're missing uh we're not missing giles he's just swedish all of a sudden right. you, you would sit there if giles was here yeah but uh oh would i sit in yeah yeah this is the guest chair you've just uh. you've nicked his headphones and everything and you're wearing his jumper so yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um is there anything you want to kind of add shout out or like do before do <laughs> yeah you might want to do something crazy i mean sam sam freeze you haven't watched sam's one yet has you no i haven't i mean uh, freestyle rapped at the end it was very awkward oh it's amazing <laughs> no i'm probably not gonna freestyle rap <laughs> no please don't but no it's been a pleasure having you here and i just hope that you can come back soon and stay for longer so we can train and i want to see you hit up more of uk spots i can't wait mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and just I going back when it's not you. raining every day as well would just be lovely yeah Mm. well it probably won't be until summer and so we'll start <laughs> no but it's it's yeah it'll be nice to see you coming back here more and just more people traveling in general mm. Mm. And yeah i need to stop rambling and, and that's it i don't know how you wrap up podcasts giles usually wraps it up um patreon's a pound like comment subscribe oh shit there's I'm those shameless. sort of things mm. yeah um and um buy kipper magazines you know yeah you have, you, have you restock have you sold out of how many Kipper magazines have you done? One, two, three, four. Um, that one right there is number three. Number three? Yeah. Is that like the last one you did? Uh, yeah. We're working on the next one right now. But nice. it's, it's all on me and I'm being very slow because <laughs> I just want it to be good. <laughs> it's coming out at some point. No, that's <laughs> good. You're putting the time in. Well, you're putting the effort in. Mm. Not the time. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, so you haven't got any in stock right now or you have? No, we don't. None. But no. at some point, the fourth Kipper mag will be out. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also keep your eyes eyes peeled for is it udg yeah is that what it is yeah. udg3 yeah so kip magazine for udg3 and then whatever you guys make after that it can be whatever will, yeah. will be whatever but keep your eyes peeled and follow i mean all of you if you're listening to this obviously follow joel on instagram but yeah if you don't what are you doing <laughs> and follow keeper as well Jeez. and uh yeah fucking hell is that it i think so that's it it's only an hour. And look out for, uh, if it's not live, look out for his 10 questions because it's very fucking good. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that it? Zesty. That's it. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> Laters. Fuck.